welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is Tobega Dlamini. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Live Giving Conversations with Tobega Dlamini. Um, thank you so much. Please do subscribe. Please do share this broadcast. Um, also, please uh, do like this broadcast. Uh, we are trusting that this content will uplift families, will encourage families, will empower families to stick together and to stay together. Uh, I'm very excited about today's topic. We're going to be attending to the issue of building emotional intimacy within a marriage, um, building emotional intimacy within a marriage. And um, this is one topic that we sort of brush over most of the time when we talk about issues of marriage. So I just want to go into a little bit of detail how you can build emotional intimacy within your marriage and also how you can sustain that and how you can um, stay in a, in a position in your marriage whereby you are both uh, in sync with each other, in sync with where you are emotionally, in sync with um, each other's challenges, in sync with, you know, what is happening in your spouse's world. So first of all, I want to just... Um, highlight to us that most of the time when we relate to the issues of intimacy the first thing that comes to mind is sexual intimacy that is the first thing that comes to mind and today i want us to sort of uh, rectify that narrative to say that uh, it's possible for a person to have sexual intimacy with somebody uh, without being emotionally intimate with somebody and this is something that takes place all over the world every day um E.g., we, 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 we can go to the streets in town and find uh, sex workers that are uh, sexually, you know, interacting with different people without being, um, you know, emotionally intimate with those people. And the unfortunate thing is that this type of behavior can also take place within a marriage where two people are having sexual relations without being emotionally intimate and this is one area that i feel needs a lot of teaching this is one area that needs um you know a lot of education within marriages it needs to be taught uh, it needs to be relayed that just because you got married to somebody does not mean that you you have to relax and be complacent uh, emotional intimacy or intimacy within a marriage is built. Intimacy within a marriage is cultivated. And today we're going to be focusing on ways in which we can build that intimacy, ways in which we can stay connected. So one of the first points that came to mind as I was researching and also, you know, thinking hard about some of these things is, is that in order to be emotionally intimate with somebody, there has to be some form of companionship or friendship. And, you know, I want to um, highlight on this point by referencing um, as well, biblically, that it was the intention of the founder of marriage that couples cleave together. The Bible says that, therefore a, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And this is, this is something that, you know, is, 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 is intended by God, that couples don't only share space, couples don't only count the number of years that they've been together, but couples actually come to a place where they cleave together, where they are one, where they, to cleave means to stick together, to cleave means to glue together, it means inseparable. And most couples do find themselves in a dilemma that they are within one household but the emotional intimacy is gone the interest in each other's lives is gone and as a result this affects all the other types of intimacies especially sexual intimacy because i believe that this is a foundation um, of any good marriage a couple needs to be emotionally intimate so the first point that i'm going to touch on is that you you do need to build a friendship with your spouse build a friendship with your spouse and the reason why i'm saying this is because there are so many schools of thoughts around the issue 
uh, of hierarchy within marriage, you know, and the standard hierarchy being that which God put in place, which is uh, God being the head of the man and the man being the head of the wife. And we sort of leave it on that hierarchical level and we do not break down the attributes of God um, and, and how God relates to a man and how God you know how christ loves the church and this is the kind of love that is not sort of seeking its own but this is the type of love that is interested in the the person the subject under it is interested in cultivating that person is interested in supporting that person is interested in being there for that person whichever way possible and sometimes i think there is there is no balance in the way that we 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 are portraying the teaching of the hierarchy within the marriage are set set up and so indirectly this chokes one of the most what i regard as one of the most um, important foundations of any relationship which is a friendship and so you find that within marriages there's either a too much patriarchy that is you know that is taking place within a marriage or you find that there's too much feminism and you know the the, the woman is sort of trying to prove her worth they're trying to uh, say listen i'm i'm in the same space as you i can do the things that you can do and i don't believe that was god's order i don't believe that that's what god intended when he created marriage and 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 god had a way you know he's demonstrated it right there at the beginning god had a way in which he approached adam in which he interacted with him and that had to do more with companionship more than anything and so i believe that if you are going to build emotional intimacy within your marriage you need to cultivate an environment of friendship more than an environment of who's boss in the house and, and, and this is very important because when you are in a, a space of companionship and friendship, that becomes a good place uh, for you to, you know, to unfold, for you to manifest, for you to unpack everything that is within you. Because a companion or a friend says to you, I've got your back, you know, I'm loyal to you, I'm here as your support structure. And this builds a, a very good environment for for emotional intimacy because every one of us wants to know that someone has our back and each and every one of us needs to know that we are supported and that we are accepted and and cultivating friendship um, within uh, your relationship can be one of those things that can be beneficial to you in the long run because now your relationship is not about who's boss and who's not boss but it's more about okay we are in this together how can we make it work how can i be there for you how can i support you and this is a very fruitful uh, thing for any t for any marriage um you know in, in in any context because this is a need of every human being and you know there is a hierarchy that god has put in place but god did not take away the issue of companionship within marriage the issue of you know cultivating each other within marriage and seeing the best in each other and being each other's support structure and um, i believe that the happiest marriages are marriages that really you know base their whole marriage on on friendship and really just saying i'm here for you no matter what i'm loyal to you i'm here to support you no matter what and number two this is how you cultivate uh, emotional intimacy within your marriage is becoming a safe space for your spouse to open up about their innermost feelings, about their dreams, about their fears, about their challenges. And, um, you know, all of us are looking for a place where we can belong. You know, all of us are looking for a place where we can confide without editing, where we can say, this is where I am. This is what I'm experiencing. You know, sometimes you don't per se need advice, but you just need an ear. You just need space where you can unwind, where you can, you know, pour out what is in your heart. And, you know, these are not things that come naturally. You know, people think that, you know, being a safe space for, for your spouse or um, being that place that your spouse can run to emotionally is something that happens overnight. It's not something that happens overnight. And this, this particular point uh, of being a safe space is also 
disturbed indirectly when the couple goes through the conflict stage where they are still trying to get to know each other there are arguments there are clashes it's two types of people completely different you know trying to get along trying to find you know consensus and usually in that conflict stage this particular space is affected because it depends on how you handle the conflict that is the determinant of whether your spouse will still see you as a safe place beyond those first years of marriage for most couples the conflict stage has resulted in them drifting apart um, for years on end and sometimes ending up in divorce because they were not able to handle the conflict stage and too much damage happened in the conflict stage uh, i want to share just a, uh, just a little example of how you can preserve this safe space despite the season that you are going through in your marriage i had a lady that told me that no matter how much her husband and and him and her will fight um the husband will always say at the end of the argument i love you and i still want to make this work and she said no matter how angry i would be that will make me feel safe that at least no matter the season that we are going through i'm in a relationship with somebody who is not writing me off because of my mistakes, who is not writing me off because of my emotions, but somebody who's fully committed into making this relationship work. And so you can cultivate a safe place in your marriage despite the season that you're going through. Even if you do hit a ditch with your spouse or you do hit a few walls, but never utter words that give your spouse the idea that you have other options or gives your gives your spouse an idea that you are walking out any moment or at the first sign of any trouble you are packing and leaving. So it's very important that we cultivate a space, a, a space of no judgment within our uh, marital unions because at the end of the day it's two people that are not perfect that you know have flaws that have come together and sometimes when we sit in the judgment seat to judge our spouses we do not become a safe space for them and so it does make them go into a shell it does make them hibernate within the marriage and so a safe space is also a place where a person feels fully accepted despite the areas of their life that still needs to grow that still needs to mature but they feel i've been given an opportunity here by being fully accepted to grow into my role to grow into a better wife to grow into a better spouse and so it's very important as well when you cultivate a safe space within your marriage that you listen more than you talk you listen more than you talk and this is something that we we really need to work on these are not things we are born with these are not things that you know we 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 have mastered over the years but these are things that now as we find that there's someone in our lives for the rest of our lives we need to be in a position where we need to hear their views we do not need to look only to our own interests but also to their interests and hear them out where they are and how they are processing things and how they are experiencing things so be a safe space for your spouse let your spouse you know uh, let let your spouse think of you every time they run into trouble let let them not think of other people before they think of you because that cultivate a sense of closeness emotionally to know that you know i have a safe space where i can say you know today i lost my temper at work and it was not good i regret it and i can have a conversation without being judged and i can go and rectify that the following day so be a safe space so that whenever your spouse runs into trouble you're the first person they think of and you're the first person they you know they want to share the news with so be safe be be peaceful be a safe place for them okay point number three be interested in your spouse's interests in your spouse's thoughts be interested in what interests them you know there are a, 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 there are a lot of couples you know that you you bump into and you hear conversations like you know my husband does not support my vision or my wife does not believe that i can actually become the ceo of this company or i can actually venture into that you know and 
And so this is one of the biggest killers of intimacy. When the person that is next to you, when your support structure does not believe that you can do something, or when your support structure does not, you know, participate or play an active role in supporting you in your journey of fulfilling your dreams. And this is where most intimacies emotionally have been killed or have been, you know, have been sabotaged because everybody who is alive today came bearing gifts, you know, bearing something to offer to this world. And once you feel that your spouse is not interested um, in, in your interest or your vision or your dream, you begin to live a life that is very independent of, of them. And, you know, though independence is good in a marriage, but, um, you know, over independence can be toxic for a marriage. So be the first one to hear their ideas out. Be the first one to cheer them on. Be the first one to bring reason, you know, when where reason is needed and where balance is needed, you know, without crushing the dream, without crushing the vision that they have for their lives. Okay. Then point number four, uh, you need to, we, we need to forgive much. As couples, you know, you're going to be with somebody for the next 40, 50, even 60 years if, if you've, you've been granted long life, you know, and in that time you will have plenty of opportunities to be offended, plenty of opportunities, you know, to to probably be disappointed in some way. You know, I'm not now referring to those people that are intentionally hurting their spouses or causing grief or, you know, emotional abuse or physical abuse or infidelity, but I'm referring to those people that are really committed and want to make things work and occasionally make certain mistakes that might hurt their spouse. You, you, you We need to, to, to understand that we are on a journey together and we are bound to step on each other's toes, but we must be willing to forgive much because unforgiveness is one of the biggest, you know, um, it's one of the biggest um, walls that you can create, you know, in terms of emotional intimacy, because when you have not forgiven a person you cannot open up completely to them and there is no marriage that can work and be fruitful without you opening up yourself fully to another human being and so we need to have you know sort of i don't want to say um, expectations that are not too high but we need to have reasonable expectations to say yes i'm i'm you know i'm going to be upset here and there but i will not continuously raise dead issues within the marriage, issues we have resolved, issues we have spoken about, because I understand that I this is the one person in the world that I need to connect with on this level, and I'm going to make this work. Point number five, we need to affirm each other. Affirmations are very important in building emotional intimacy affirmations and when i'm talking about affirmations i'm not just talking about um a male telling his wife how beautiful she is all the time but sometimes people just want to feel seen you know beyond the physical beyond what other people can see which is general people want to be seen for who they are they want to be seen for their potential it's very important when you're in a relationship especially with us as well ladies you know we often think that men men don't feed on praise and men you know don't need affirmations like we do and i've come to to realize that affirmations are needed by both males and females within the relationship because affirmations actually uh, you know they, they enhance the mood of the person they even enhance you know a sense of commitment in a person when when somebody says i value you i'm glad you're in my life i'm glad i made the choice to marry you that sort of gives you that affirmation that you are on the right track and it makes that person warm up to you you know that a person that also is exposed to my flaws is also exposed to my weaknesses still thinks that i am worth it and is still choosing me you know after all these years a person is still choosing me despite what they know about me so this is just one of the things that i, I also wanted to highlight that affirmations are not 
for male for females only but affirmations are also for males let us be consistent in just feeding each other you know with good thoughts and with good affirmations to say you can also do that you are good in this you can do this you know i'm glad i'm, I'm you know i'm glad you're in my life i've seen how you do this and this has added value in our lives and so these are the five points that i wanted to share with you in relation to building emotional intimacy that you know once you build your emotional intimacy within a marriage everything else is automatic you know even the sexual relations they run smoother because you have a basis there is another foundation that you have built on your marriage which is not just you know sexual intercourse but you actually connect on a deeper level you connect emotionally you connect mentally so point number one we said you build friendship so this is not who's boss type of a situation that is happening in the household but it's a companionship it's like two is better than one and you know we will receive a reward for for our labor we are both in this we are both pushing this and so when you start to understand the nature of god uh, in loving the church you will understand that love is more about naturing love is more about bringing the best in somebody love is more is, is more about protecting each other is more about companionship and enjoying your time together so point number two be a safe space for your spouse cultivate an environment of peace even when you argue even when you don't see eye to eye never utter words that are going to make your spouse feel like an outsider or make your spouse feel like you regret your decision or you are discontented with the overall decision of taking them as a spouse okay point number three be interested in their interests in their vision in their dream support it you know speak life to it embrace it um, and you know you find that when you embrace people's dreams you find that a person finds confidence to actually launch into the things they were scared to do forgive much and forgiveness is a barrier to emotional intimacy be intentional about it don't allow issues to linger on more than they should you know this life is very short we need to be intentional about what to let go of we need to accept that we are not perfect we will make mistakes and we move on from those mistakes okay then point number five affirmations never starve your spouse of affirmations this will build your emotional intimacy this will make you connect on a deeper level because in your lifetime you have found somebody who will love you despite your flaws who will love you despite everything that you have gone through through every storm that you've gone through and and this is something that is special you know to find underneath the sun somebody will believe in you no matter what somebody who will embrace you no matter what so um as i close i just want to say i hope with these nuggets you are going to implement you know some changes are difficult to make you might find that you try it and your spouse is still a little bit cold in the you know in those mar marital unions where things have gone south you know i do hope that this in information will give you insight and you will take small steps into rectifying the situation into you know finding solutions for your marriage and it's simple it's it you know it's simple when you create a platform for somebody to be safe and feel accepted and fully embraced you will find that that person flourishes and the marriage will run smoother than expected so thank you so much for tuning in today please do share this broadcast please share this video with your friends family anybody who's married who's about to get married this will benefit them please do subscribe please do share this broadcast i hope that um you know people will benefit from this and i trust that families will be restored um until we we meet again next time blessings to you